folks. Yeah, okay, it's been a really long time, but I can explain and hopefully I can make up for it as well. Now in my last update vlog, the M8 had only just arrived along with the surface plate and a few other bits and pieces. So obviously the workshop is quite a bit more filled out now. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna have a proper tour of the space and I can show you what's come in, what some of my plans for the future are. And also I can show you some of the little projects and bits and bobs that I've been doing along the way. So you will have seen that I put out a video only last week uh, about making some memory heat spreaders for Thermaltake's uh, RAM Mod 2022 Season 1 Invitational Competition. That's quite a name. But that was a pure machining montage. It didn't have any commentary. And most of that is just due to time constraints. It takes a very long time to film one of these videos, especially if you're doing voiceovers, commentary, and having to take breaks to talk to the camera and so on. So for that one, I just wanted to get the video out and do the best job that I possibly could do. And in the future, when I have a bit more time on my hands with some of the projects, I can bring you in and do the old school proper commentary type thing. Now, most importantly, sorry for taking so long with this video. In fact, I had actually filmed a full video sort of to release around November, December time. Uh, unfortunately, that one was sort of just plagued with issues. I lost my microphone part way through and some of the voiceover segments I wasn't very happy with after the fact. And also the workshop was changing constantly throughout the video, which meant that I kind of wanted to film those bits and release those things and I ended up releasing, well, nothing. So what I will do though, is I will go through that old footage. I'll redo some intros, outros, and explanations, and I will piece it together. We'll do some timey-wimey wizardry to make it seem a little bit more coherent. And then hopefully I can release that fairly soon and we can get a good video out of it. The other issue I've had is that a lot of my work has NDAs attached to it. So obviously I can't go around sharing that. Uh, and it's actually quite a shame because those tend to be really interesting little projects. However, I have had other bits of work that I've been able to share on my Instagram, which is by far the easiest place to follow me for sort of quick updates and actually keeping up with me in terms of communication as well. It's a lot easier to have a chat on Instagram than it is via YouTube comments and so on. So if you really wanna keep up to date, make sure you're following my Instagram. It's by far the best place currently to follow my content. Now, a lot of those projects look like they're probably video worthy, but actually they tend to be either quite quick or I wasn't comfortable trying to multitask and do the filming whilst learning how to use the machine. So I kind of put that at the back. I can do an Instagram post very quickly from my phone. I don't have to worry about it too much, but doing a full YouTube video is actually quite a challenging thing. And really I can't be distracted when I'm doing something new or very, very challenging. And that's a bit of an issue. So I'm hoping some of the future projects where I've got a bit more time, where I can explore things a little bit more thoroughly, I can really document them properly, a bit like how I used to do over on BitTech. But that's enough waffle. Let's just get into the meat of things and have a look around the workshop. This. you can see how new these are because I've still got the protective wrapping on the handles. Now one of the first areas I focused on was making sure that I had some work surfaces as well as tool storage. So I've got some dual storage both on here, here and also in these really, really fancy Lister tool chests. So these are mostly for end mills and other bits and bobs. As you can see, I've got some fixturing bits and pieces on the top here, as well as where I keep the Shunk Triboss system and my unfortunate graveyard, which needs a proper box. But the thing I'm most proud of is in here, this system allows me to keep everything nice and organized so what I've gone and done is I've taken all of my tools and I've given them all unique numbers within Fusion. So I've got a tool library for aluminium in these blue bins over here. I have acrylic in these red bins. And basically each one of these numbers corresponds to my tool numbers in Fusion. So I can call up a tool in Fusion and I will know exactly where it is in my toolbox and just as importantly, I can also tell exactly how many of each tool I've got 
very quickly. Now, the advantage here is that in the future, if I need an ERP system or something, this is going to be organized that I should be able to import a lot of values quite simply, as well as just be able to keep track of things whilst I'm still on a small scale. And also, just listen to how incredibly satisfying this sound is. Ooh, that's nice. Now, there's one problem. Flat surfaces. These are deadly. Anyone who's worked with lots of tables and things knows that what happens is typically you just put something down and then it stays there. So the fact that they're clean at the moment is not necessarily indicative of how things always are. I try to keep things nice and neat and tidy within reason, but naturally for assembly and things, I do need flat surfaces and I can't really avoid that. Now to help with this, I do have a load of fancy shells. So I keep a load of stock over here. So fairly typical type stuff, lots of acrylic over on that side. We've got some brass, we've got aluminium, various bits and pieces. More on this in a future video. Keeping things nice and organized is absolutely crucial because otherwise I've just got no method of knowing what is where and I'll just spend so much time looking for things, especially in a space as big as this. It's so easy to just lose things in a drawer and you'll never find it again. Or if you do, it's hours and hours of just wasted search time and you start adding it all up. In theory, by keeping things nice and organized and all in their proper places, I should be able to make sure that everything is maintained nice and smoothly. Now over here, we have something I've wanted for a very long time, which is a sort of a washing and finishing station. So I've put my buffing wheel over there. That's gonna be replaced with a much beefier one in the future because this is a little bit on the wimpy side. It's good for the old shed, but not really for here. I've got a big old ultrasonic cleaner over here. I've got a smaller one inside the cabinet, which I can take out for doing tiny jobs like you'll have seen in the RAM mod video. Now, this thing is what I wanted to do in the old shop, I never got round to. Proper organization for all of my sandpapers. So all these abrasives obviously are quite difficult to keep track of when you've got them all on shelves and things. So having them in drawers like this, I can easily see all the different grips and grades makes things a lot easier. It's just nice and organized. I don't have to worry about what I have and where it is. I've also got the tumbler over here. Haven't had to use that yet, but I'm sure we will in the future and I might even consider getting a much bigger one so I can do larger parts and just larger quantities as well. Now, one luxury I haven't got around to doing yet is renovating this space over here. So in there, it's just at the moment, a bit of a box room, but I will be getting around to doing this hopefully sometime in the autumn, perhaps. The main problem is that the builders I was gonna be working with, I'm currently using on a separate personal project. So that's taking precedence. I haven't really needed this quite yet, but I will be needing it fairly soon. I haven't really got the time to do all this kind of work myself. So I'd rather just delegate that properly and I can focus on uh, actually growing this as a business. Now, and this, on the building side of things, this is the first workbench. I'm gonna have a few more in the future, obviously, but I just wanted to drip feed them to know what I'm working with and make sure I don't buy the wrong thing, for instance. So obviously I've got my saw over here. I'm looking to probably replace that. It's, it's been okay. I don't really like it that much. I find it quite clunky to work with. I always have. I probably should have got a different model to begin with, but c'est la vie. Got the scroll saw and obviously the little belt sander. Again, I should probably replace this. It's a little bit dinky. It does sort of work okay, but it's heinously loud for how much material it actually removes. Now, this sort of messy looking station over here is going to become my photography section. So at the moment, we've still got the aftermath from the RAM mod photography. I won't be using this granite surface plate for much longer. The idea is to have this whole top surface here be stone. I want it to be textured. I'll have a look at what's available. Um, I'm gonna have a much larger turntable, probably about 600 millimeters or so in the middle here. And the idea there being I can put whatever it needs to be a case or uh, distro plates or anything can go on there and then I can have the workshop as a backdrop, which I think looks really cool. It makes it a bit more interesting. I don't really like pure um, studio photos. I think they lack a bit of soul. But if I do need to do those from time to time, I can just have a backdrop roll over here and it's quite easy to partition something over here away from the rest of the space. Now, one problem of not having the office area renovated yet means I also don't have a kitchen, but 
Don't worry, I can stay hydrated during these incredibly hot English summers. It's not a problem because I got myself a fridge. I've wanted one for so long in a workshop. I don't know why I didn't get a mini fridge beforehand or something, but it just seems like a nice thing to have. And now I can offer people water when they come to visit. And I don't know, I think it's just pleasant. And of course, we had to have a bit of fun with it. So I filled it with silly water. Okay, don't judge me. I had this joke running with a friend for about 10 years that we would one day just do this, just have a fridge full of it for no reason. And well, now I've done it and I feel good about myself. In any case, I've got some larger bottles that I just fill up with filter tap water anyway, so no harm done. Now I'm sure that some of you in the last video were wondering, what the hell is this? What is this water bottle doing on the side of the M8? And what are all these tubes? What's going on here? Well, this is actually a secondary coolant system, so a temporary one that I set up so that I could machine acrylic more efficiently on the M8. Now, the reason why I had to do this at all was because normally this machine runs ethanol. So if you're cutting uh, aluminium or brass, copper, etc., you're running ethanol. You can't use ethanol on acrylic. It will craze. You'll have all sorts of cracking problems down the line, especially if you're using any form of extruded acrylic. But even on cast acrylic, it's problematic and you get terrible finishes even if it doesn't craze. So you can't really use that method. So normally what I do is I run an oil which is in here, and it just squirts a little bit and I use the air system from the regular spindle. And that does a fantastic job. It gets some really good finishes. Now, in theory, I'm not going to be needing to use this for much longer because I went and ordered an upgrade. And this is what it looks like. So normally, an M8 only comes with one tank. However, I now have two tanks. So this tank is full of ethanol and this one is full of blazer. And the idea here is that this coolant here will be assigned automatically inside fusion. I just need to then swap a cable around and then what will happen is that it will use this tank for the cutting job instead of this one and vice versa when I need to cut different materials. So that way all it will do is just need to flush out a tiny little tube and then I'm good to go. Now this is definitely one of those upgrades where I would have gone for it straight off the bat had I known I could actually do it in the first place. I mean, it's not exactly obvious and it was never presented as an option. So at the moment I found out that you could have more than one tank, well, I jumped on that and I'm hoping this is going to solve an awful lot of issues in the future. Now, my final big kit reveal is a really, really cool one. Trust me, you're gonna like it because it's this. Well, this is a hexagon seven axis absolute arm. It's basically an incredibly precise high resolution 3D scanner and CMM. And this is what I was using the other day to scan in the PCB for the RAM mod. It's an incredibly cool bit of kit. I mean, it's just so unbelievably futuristic, but also it's gonna be an incredible boon to my productivity. Now, I think I'll go into this in more detail in the future because really it does need a proper video of its own because there's just so much to show and also the capabilities are absolutely fantastic. Needless to say, this is an absolute game changer for me, especially when I'm sent parts that need to be reverse engineered, which I frequently am, for instance, cases and motherboards and so on. So big things to come with this one. Well, I hope you enjoyed the little tour of the space. Now, if there's anything you would like to see in more detail, make sure you let me know in the comments down below and I can see if I can maybe work into a future video. I'd definitely like to revisit perhaps the uh, tool management system that I use in a future bit of content uh, because I think that could be really helpful for some people, especially if you're starting out. Now, one last thing, you've probably noticed I'm holding one of the memory modules from my RAM mod entry, and that's because the voting is gonna be ending in only a few days time. So if you did enjoy the video, please do drop by the link and pop me a vote. It does make a huge difference. And I'll be eternally grateful. Now, until then, why don't I leave you with some lovely footage of these actually all RGB'd up and working in a PC. I promise my next video will come out a little bit sooner than the last one. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.